This is how we do. This is how we do. Boss wants a uh, corn pick. Spot. Spot. Oh, okay. Now break it loose. I came to change the game and claim the crown and move the crowd. Everybody get down to the sound you hear. Crystal clear, smooth and debonair, and I have no peer. Stand alone, command the tone, demand the throne. Lay down the gauntlet, let the hammer's thrown. To nail your coffin, proceed with caution. Cool cat daddy, better hold your girlfriend. Hurt for your style, never watch your world in. Curse of the now, about to close your curtain. From pen to pad, block the ab. Future of the hip hop instructing labs. You hold a mic and they point and laugh. MC professor, and this the class, this the school. Teach the fool, me over dope tracks, that's the jewel Praise the worth, and it's priceless <laughs> DJ Element doing it big on the ferry on our way back to Money Making Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Mighty 4 TV, baby. What's up? I started getting into it like an 80. That was more like when I really started really getting into it, seeing it, and, and, and growing more into in love with the dance. Eventually, I started pushing away from the arts and going more toward the dance. Kind of like, because my love was more. The martial arts. Died a little bit, but the dance started catching my eye more. The martial arts, I still have my love for the martial arts. A lot of my people, foundation people, are in the arts. But I got more into it. The love of the dance is started catching my heart more. I was kind of mentored and, and, and inspired by all of them. You know, more so Kid Freeze and Fast Break. More, more so. I mean, like, those are the two, and Corey too, but Corey, never, we never really trained together like that. We did, here and there we got together, we did, but more, I, I gravitated towards Kid Freeze and Fast Break. They were definitely trying to get dudes on another level, trying to help them out. So, I was like, at my game, I was nowhere near any of them cats. So they took me under the wing, like, yo, and they helped me get to take it to that next level. Helped me in the, in the journey to take it to that next level like that, and create my own thing. You know, so I kind of took and seen what they were doing and used my own creativity and made my own. I said, okay, I see, I see what powers, because I, I had no clue. These guys really like blew my mind with some of the stuff they were doing. Um, so from that point on, my journey began as far as flow is concerned. Before it was prior to balancing, <laughs> then flow was created at that point. So we, I met up with uh, Brian first. And that's when I was dancing with me, Kid Freeze, Fast Break. We like kind of had them squad together. We all like kind of bonded and started being real cool. So we met Brian. Brian, we clicked off and we started hanging. And then all of a sudden, I met Chino. And then we formed a crew out of that. And that was like, to me, that was like, at that point, at that time frame, nobody can mess with that spot, that posse. And to my opinion, what I've seen. Like I said, that's. My opinion, my experience from that era at that time. Growing up as a kid, I seen a lot of crazy shit. People getting shot and stabbed up in my neighborhood. Um, it was like the drug capital of Alfred City. So if people don't, you know, Alfred City Avenue D. It, it had a lot of crazy shit going on in the, in the 70s, in the 80s, you know what I mean? So I grew up just seeing a lot of crazy shit. I, personally, myself, I was held hostage <laughs> when I was 12 years old which came out in all the papers and the news when I was uh, 12, you know. So, I mean, that's just to give you a little idea. I've seen dudes get tossed off buildings and, well, they say they got tossed, but I heard it's all suicide, so who knows what happened, but shit was happening. You know, you're sitting down in the park, you're a kid, you're playing whatever, Scalzies or whatever it is you're playing, or we played back then, and you see a fucking body drop. Excuse my French, <laughs> body drop. It's kind of tragic, you know. At that time, you had, to, you had to suck it up, like, you know, whatever, but that's really, traumatizing for a young kid. But you can't really show that out there in the streets that you actually were like, whoa. And my story is one amongst many stories in New York. I'm just one person, and if you go around, you, you'll hear all kinds of different stories and different experiences. Uh, growing up in New York, it was, you know, it was uh, it was rough, but it was a good experience too. Because you had all them experiences, but you also, in the midst of it, 
you know, we could have just like, okay, I'm gonna go out to the, you know, go on vacation. I'm gonna go to Hawaii and get away from here. You know, no, this is where you at. You ain't going nowhere. That's your reality. You ain't leaving the block. That's it. My mother raised six of about six of us by herself. This is my reality. So I had to make the best of what I had at, at that. That was my reality. And I had to make the best of it. So I grew up in that thing. It's just like it wasn't no name. It was no hip hop. It was not, it was just streets. You live in a, in a neighborhood, and these are what the neighborhood had. You know. We didn't have much, but that's what we had to offer. So us as being suppressed or having issues or having things are traumatic, when we find that moment of peace of stuff we like, we use our creativity. We have so much that we're suppressing. We let it out in the dance. We let it out in the graph and our, our, our artistic skills. We were able to do a lot and, and create a lot of things. Now, this was happening all over the city. Like, this is just me and the lower, but you can imagine this is everywhere in New York. Different areas, different boroughs different people, different crowds, different time frames. You know, like like when I see one of the sprung up in Brooklyn, the Bronx, Manhattan, Queens, and the similarities to some of the stuff that guys are doing. And then there's totally different styles that you that you don't have a clue. One thing I loved about back then is when you're dancing, you never knew who you were gonna go up against. You never know what was coming into that circle. Never. Because you didn't go to YouTube, you didn't couldn't go anywhere, you had to just be out there. And that was the excitement of it, y'all. Because, you know, when you lose a draw, that shit was exciting. <laughs> and you'd be like, you know, so you get your A game up, you're practicing. And it was a way of getting, that was the way of getting out of the streets. And, you know, you're like, you're getting your, your grind out with your, with your buddies, or get your little solo practice, you get a little crew practice. And you go out there and, you, you know, whatever. You just do your thing. Dance, check out the, the styles, go out there and, and, and get busy. Get inspired, see things, and be like, okay, yeah, I see. And then just start using your own mind to create your own things. That's how it was. You wanted to bring your own flavor, your own originality out there. And uh, that was a big thing in New York. But at the same time, some, sometimes you see people that, that dance similar. They had their own little flavors, but there were similarities in there. And you see them now beefing now with shit. I don't get into that, this politics. I believe everybody has a rich story, rich experiences, and everybody has an opinion. So, you know, you state what you feel. Um, and I think everybody should. Everybody should be truthful and, and should tell the stories like a big puzzle. There's pieces. I think there's pieces that will never be revealed because they're not around, no longer around. There's pieces to that puzzle that will never, nobody will ever be able to get every part of New York and what was going on. Because there's too many years and too many people. A lot of them passed away. A lot of them jailed. A lot of them just was in for a hot second. But for whatever time frame they were in, they were doing their thing. If it was a year. They made a, they influenced a lot of people. Plenty of times, you, so even back then in the 80s, it was dangerous. Like, you never know, you get in a circle, somebody getting their feelings, or they're not used to getting smoked, and you smoke them, and, and they're with their peoples, and you're not in there, and you're down your neck in the woods. You, you might want to get out of there ASAP, quick, you know? Unless you're ready to go. So, I mean, there was, like I said, there was good things about that, and there was bad things. I guess those are one of the bad things. Like. Culture was great because it kind of got you out of the bullshit. But at the same time, you, you got stuck in the bullshit. Guys that got stabbed up and a lot of stuff in circles. Like, that's stories that I won't even get into, but some really crazy shit I've seen in my home. Um, over, over dancing. In the earlier days, in the prehistoric days. <laughs> For me.